president is also looking at um, his case at, at the court today. Um, it seems that uh, things are not so easy as you speak. Let me start with you, Wakili. And um, impeach deputy president now wants the proceedings at the high court on his removal stopped pending the determination of an appeal <coughs> that he has filed. It seems that this battle is still far away from over. Yeah, sure. Uh, what, what is happening? Uh, mm. A test of, uh, of the constitution, of 2010 yeah. constitution is on trial. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening is that... Uh, the, what the High Court did is uh, they allowed um, the DCJ mm -hmm. to, en to empanel uh, a bench yes. to hear the matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gashagwa's side are arguing that uh, the deputy does not have that, those powers. Those powers are made for the CJ. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what happened is that uh, if this is allowed to <coughs> subsist... Mm -hmm. Uh, we are going to see a situation whereby the president might be outside the country and the deputy president decides to fire all the cabinet and puts in a new cabinet. It's, it's that big now that uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's, giving, it's giving the deputies in all sections, uh, uh, in all sections of government, mm. powers to do... To exercise the to executive exer authority to, on behalf to, of their bosses. Sure to exercise the ex executive authority on behalf of their bosses. So uh, this decision is going to be, it's going to be very big mm. for every sector. The police, the, uh, the, 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 the parliament, mm -hmm. when, uh, when, the, when the speaker is not around, uh, the deputy speaker can make a lot of changes. So mm -hmm. this, is what, this is what is happening. Uh, what the High Court failed to tell us was uh, that... Uh, where was the CJ when uh, all this was happening? Mm. Did the CJ okay uh, the DCJ to and panel this bench? Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, what we are going to witness in the uh, court of appeal is the same thing we witnessed in the court in the high court, mm -hmm. whereby uh, we are going to see a lot of legal uh, battles. Mm -hmm. uh, each side will be uh, ready to argue. Uh, their own points, which are surprisingly both sides uh, have valid arguments, mm -hmm. but now it will be which argument carries the day, which argument will be uh, favored by the judges mm. who will be sitting uh, on that You've matter. You've raised a very <coughs> pertinent concern there, because the argument was the DCJ had no powers to impanel the bench. The bench. And that was the big, the, the, during the preliminary, yes. I got it right, right? Yes. So, at this particular point, what, what are we looking at today? What we are looking on today is uh, now they are going to they are going to sit on the, uh, on this appeal mm. and uh, decide. You, now the, 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 the case at the High Court is not going to continue mm -hmm. until uh, the panel and Parliament issue is uh, done with. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to take time mm. because now uh, it's staying uh, it's staying the. the, the the decision of the High Court mm -hmm. to uh, to agree that the panel is well uh, is well empaneled mm. by the DCJ. Mm. So uh, we are going to see a lot of rounds, a lot of turns, because now uh, probably the uh, if uh, the the Court of Appeal does not agree to the petition, mm -hmm. probably they will move to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. That's going to take time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, it's <coughs> issues of justice is never, that easy. it's never that easy. When yeah, you listen yes. to, to, to that, you, yes. you are also accused. I'll come back to you, Patrick. You, right. you have also been put on the spotlight. If the speaker is not there, the, the deputy speaker can make certain... Um, I don't know whether that is the standing orders in Parliament, um, whether it's, but the precedence, what he's talking about, yes. is already being set. And lawyers will have a very good field day to run with it. Uh, I don't know, although... Not a lawyer, but a teacher. Hmm. Uh, when we look at this 2010 constitution, mm -hmm. there are many, many areas within the institution of the operations of government yeah. and the structure where we removed, like, vice president mm -hmm. to bring in a substantive office called the deputy president. Mm. And we also removed... Like now, we have the deputy C, uh, uh, DCJ.
the DCJ, the Deputy yes. Chief Justice. Yes. And that term deputy comes with a lot of powers. So that the deputy of the president or the deputy of chief justice mm. can not be just removed by uh, uh, sheer word. Mm -hmm. It is inscribed within the constitution that that position has certain powers. And for the deputy president, it has powers because now it is a president. Mm. It is the president and the <coughs> deputy. The, the, the office is for the presidency. Mm. And uh, <coughs> lawyers, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's good now I'm sitting with one of them. Yeah. <laughs> they, are not, they are never right and they are never wrong. It depends <laughs> on how you interpret uh, that, that law. <laughs> and that is why we have them argue in the courts. Yes. Uh, if the keyword is argue. argue yeah, <laughs> arguments. How you bring up arguments... Uh -huh before a panel of mm. uh, judges and uh, it is the duty of the judges to interpret the arguments and see which one is valid mm. so we are going in circles and round rounds and i think for the, the three judges to recuse themselves was not easy mm -hmm. because like now if i ask you to can you get out of that chair and that is your job, you know, and you are the one to decide. Of course, you will not get out of yeah. that chair. So the de decision was still lying with that bench, mm -hmm. uh, which, and the arguments that they advanced, uh, when I, 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 I read the verdict of the, the, the judges, mm. they said <coughs> that those arguments did not make the threshold mm. to allow or to make them recuse themselves. Yeah. So I do not know. But in my opinion, mm. and maybe in the opinion of others if necessary, is that the determination of the cases of deputy president, especially impeachment and the president, mm. to me, I think we need to look at our constitution and allow them to directly go to the Supreme Court without passing through the High Court and the Court of Appeal. Just the way we do the, the, the appeal of the president during election. We, are just, we were just given two weeks or 14 days. I mm. think now they, are, they, are, they have expanded the days with mm -hmm. it. So in the future, we need to bring certain bills and, uh, to allow the impeachment of the deputy president or other senior ranking officers, CJ, D DCJ, the speaker, the presidency, to go directly to the Supreme Court so that these cases, like now we have, we mm. are in a judicial quagmire yeah. of this country. We do not have a substantive a deputy president mm. as, a, as we talk now. And these lawyers, when you see, th think they are humble here. They can take you in circles <laughs> for the next three months uh, or even three years. Because I had... Um, Collins, you're being accused. I had Omari, Omari, one of our senior lawyers here, saying that this case will go up to 2027. Mm -hmm. And I, I had I have a lot of respect to Kaminwa Aminwa. Uh -huh. he, he told one, but are you, you know, you are... Uh, you were breastfeeding when I was <laughs> litigating and said they should be allowed to talk as much as they can. So yes. they don't, uh, we don't envisage a time when, if we don't have a time framework, mm. uh, when this case must end. Allow me to bring in Patrick. Could, be, could it be that the reason why, uh, as what Meshwa is saying, mm -hmm. that there should be a, a direct um, going to the Supreme Court, instead of starting from the High Court to the Court of Appeal and then ultimate to the Supreme Court. Right. Then you have this case done and dusted with finality once and for all. But uh, that would be so unfair. I mean, right. the level of justice in this country. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy that idea. Mm. Uh, reason being, at every stage of argument, we eliminate some other things and other things crop up. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, we only had some few applications, yes. which uh, the, uh, the Wakil will tell you mm. that there are more applications that are coming. This was just a bit of what application is supposed to come. So these people, they already know. When uh, Omari says, Danson mm. Omari says that um, this case might take time and the impeached deputy president might, take, mm -hmm. might, might be there until 2027, he might be right. And at the same time, you see uh, the violation or the rule of the law calls for impartiality, calls mm -hmm. for fairness, mm -hmm. does not call for whatever uh, offense or whatever was, w w was committed. Mm -hmm. So when it comes for, to justice, it's not what you did, it's circumstances at which 
someone did whatever they did. Yeah. So circumstances that if you argue your point on circumstantial uh, things, mm -hmm. uh, there must there might be a way for the deputy uh, president impeached mm -hmm. uh, regarding Ashanti. Would it be the reason why his uh, security detail was somehow reinstated? Yeah, you see, not fully though. You see, uh, when the argument got into court, actually the preliminaries was in the Senate when people there was a lot of argument with the Senate and people realized Mosuse. Uh, the, the, the motion mover yes. did not have substantial evidence was probably a uh, one of mouth you know uh, argument yes, yeah. Yeah. and there was no substantial you know when people come out and accuse Patrick Osoy today and the first impression to the people is what I committed mm -hmm. but when we begin to argue or maybe we begin to argue those points you realize that it is not as it is said okay yeah all right yeah. So, let's, let's take a break, and I want to serve you tea. Then we come back, we're still going to get into it. Um, it's going to be an interesting one as we wait to see how the judge is going to work on it. It was a very swift and a fast ruling last week that did not even last for five minutes. I'm so sure even the lawyers were baffled. <laughs> uh -huh. Did you expect that? After the many, uh, the, one of the lawyers termed it as speeches. This yes. side is giving speeches, this side is giving speeches. <laughs> uh -huh. And those long submissions yes. uh, ended up to a, a to five the ruling. Minute, five minutes, uh, this is it, and that was it. All right. Yes. Let's take a break. And we come back. We're still going to continue this discussion shortly. Stay with us. All right. Welcome back. So now, um, let me just get straight into it. Uh, we are looking, I'm looking at the Daily Nation here. Um, Wakili, because uh, the case is at the case at the right at the High Court right now today is going to be one of those determining one whether the case is going to continue or the deputy president or the ruling is going to give way for the swearing in of Kithuri Kindiki, right? Yes. So uh, what is going to happen is that uh, there is going to be a matter of jurisdiction mm -hmm. whereby uh, the Court of Appeal is going to now that this is now before the Court of Appeal. Yes. Now, uh, the Court of Appeal will, uh, first of all, pause uh, the proceedings at the, court, at the High Court. Mm -hmm. <coughs> In doing so, uh, it will either decide to swiftly determine whether the, bench is, uh, the High Court bench is uh, properly, uh, properly empaneled. Mm -hmm. uh, and if so, it will, uh, it will take, if so, it will take back uh, the, the proceedings back to the High Court, mm -hmm. so that the High Court can now hear the substantive uh, issues on the impeachment of Rigathi Gashagwa. Mm. Yeah. So what happens is that uh, uh, the case at the High Court, now, you know, the proper case has not been now discussed. Not yet. W what we are having is just uh, mayor applications, <coughs> uh, mayor uh, petitions. Mm. Uh, after we are done with that, is, not, is now when we begin uh, the real thing. Mm -hmm. And that is not going to be... If, now, if, the, if the applications and the petitions are taking this much, now imagine how, um, um, how much time it will <coughs> take to discuss. No, one, no wonder you lawyers submit, are very confident uh, that it might go up to 2027. Mm -hmm. There's a reason to why you're saying that. But, Patrick, that puts the country in a state where we... in a state of uncertainty. Right. Um, Parliament did its work, right. same as Senate, and now we are in the judiciary. Right. Um, we have, quote unquote, two deputy presidents as the president of the country. Right. Look at that situation. Actually, as we look at into this matter, mm. we haven't even gone to the nominee. Whereby, in this case, uh, legally, uh, Professor Gidure Kidiki does not uh, meet the threshold of the qualification of person to be nominated, not mm -hmm. on academia. Uh, uh, qualification, but on constitution matter. Mm -hmm. One, someone my, uh, should have, uh, you should have resigned from a political party and again you should have been in like three months in a political party before you become a nominee to the, to the seat. So you see that is an application pending. So these lawyers, they will not tell you that that is a, a kind, of a, kind of a joker they are still holding that they are going to take back to court. So they are now at the preliminaries of challenging. Patrick, why, why, are, you bub <laughs> why are you busting the lawyers' bubble? <laughs> so I'm telling you. Yeah. So the other day I talked, I uh, was asking Danson Omari, like, and I asked him the same question. He said that just, just wait, that's the next move. 
And that's the next move these guys are going to take. And I'm telling you, the case is not as easy as we or the government probably thought it would be. Because now there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, laws, a lot of uh, constitution requirements for such, uh, for, such, uh, for such impeachment to mm. take place. Mm. So it might take time. It might take time. Yes. And then again, at the moment, we can't say, and that is the reason why when you, you see the other day when we, um, the functions were in Mombasa, <coughs> the, the, ad, uh, the address of uh, Professor Kidiki, Kidiki did not, he was not given that uh, platform as the deputy, uh, the deputy president of this country. And again, as the constitution, the 2020 constitution requires. You see, I was so puzzled to understand that the deputy president is still the vice president because we thought that this seat was elective and at the same time what also the attorneys will not tell you that for any a vetting of any person expect the nominee for the deputy president is supposed to be undertaken by the chairman of the aibc then that is another quagmire so there's a lot of there are a lot, there are a lot of uh, loopholes that is awaiting for that seat to be uh, actually uh, occupied mm. so it's not an easy game where does IBC come in here which may if you understand <coughs> what he said I you know IBC is uh, basically in charge of uh, nominations of uh, the constitutional holders of yes. the office of the presidency mm -hmm. but I think the Constitution did not envisage this time when we do not have the IBC in place. Yes, so what is next? What it is not constituted. Yes. But in Parliament, we have serious legal minds. We have serious researchers. We have, we have the capacity in Parliament. And when this thing was brought through Parliament and passed those stages, mm. and you know the House, the Business Committee of the House, one chairing is the speaker who is also uh, has a legal mind and we have many uh, uh, recognized also lawyers within this country mm -hmm. in parliament but our strength is in the back room we have serious researchers you know even kindiki himself during icc when the current president was in icc mm. you know he was his legal researcher yes I am also just baffled with the turn of events that uh, some of these procedures that we undertook in Parliament are being highly questioned by, by the lawyers. So that is why I'm saying that we are in a set of a judicial quagmire yeah. in this country. And that is also why I stated <coughs> that these lawyers, they can never be wrong and they can never be right. All of them has valid reasons to mm -hmm. argue their cases. So it will be depend on the, the judges uh, the, at the, either Court of Appeal mm. and the High Court mm -hmm. to interpret their arguments. But I think <coughs> it's not about that we have the vice president. We have the deputy president. If we had the vice president, like during the Moist time, yeah. uh, Gashagwa will now be at home. Moy would just by roadside would just say from today I have sacked mm. the, the vice president. Mm. But I think we moved away from that. And that is why we brought the twenty ten constitution where the deputy president cannot be merely be removed by the president. Yeah. And that is why we have to go along all through these legal processes and uh, procedures, both at Parliament and at the Senate. Mm. But I think just as my friend said that the constituted constitution is at a test and at crossroad. We want to see the separation of powers. Fully F activated. Fully activated. Yeah. The parliament, the executive, mm. and also the judiciary. Mm. We want to see really, do we have those separation of powers mm. and the determination. And I think our democracy is really maturing. We have the country is, un is stable, mm -hmm. despite the fact that we still don't have the deputy president. Yeah. But we, we have our court system going on, the parliament is going on, and the executive are also working. So I think as a country, this is a test of our constitution and also maturity of our democracy. So I believe that, uh, but for the betterment of the country, we must in the future have a time frame mm -hmm. 
as they were saying, the 60 days to have this done, we need to have that time frame that even the judicial processes should not exceed those number of days. They must be determined whether right or wrong, as lawyers would say. Yeah. But the pronouncements of the judges will carry the day. Mm. So I think we must have a time frame for this because the country must run. We have serious uh, uh, duties of the deputy president. And the earlier it is determined, mm -hmm. the better for the country. I'm looking at a situation here, gentlemen, when if parliament was given you know you did your job as parliament you you undertook the process fully and then you hand it over to the next team but then look at it this way if the deputy president is successfully pitched let's just have you know the final bit of it now what do you think should be the yes the the, the president that is being set don't you think parliament or the executive will have powers to whip members of parliament to have everything to sail through what is happening is that we all uh, the deputy president has already been impeached. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the parliamentary steps has, have already been taken. Yes. Before I go to that first, I want to respond to what he said about uh, separation of powers. Mm. It's very funny that it's coming from a member of parliament <laughs> that uh, separation of powers is on test. When we rightly say that the executive is in bed with the uh, judiciary, uh, with, the, with, with the parliament, mm. whereby now the, the speaker who should be who should have been uh, bipartisan in in the process of impeachment of the uh, deputy president was not the deputy uh, the deputy speaker was not so uh, uh, in terms of separation of powers we still have a long way to go <coughs> yeah. what forms that statement uh, the statements he made uh, prior to uh, uh, the impeachment of the deputy president mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he spoke as as though he had received instructions from the executive but somebody would argue that he was speaking on behalf as a member of parliament then deputy speaker and she's a woman right? yes as a member of member of parliament not as a deputy speaker. that is what she said that outside was there she now, was not speaking as a deputy now, speaker yeah. now, now, now imagine uh, in the event that the speaker was not in the country at the time and she was supposed to now uh, to run be the there. show yeah. just the way uh, <laughs> the story of this See the way you're saying lawyers <laughs> <laughs> <they're never laughs> <all these. laughs> I thought we were going to run away with it. Yes. <laughs> but to answer my question, the precedent that is being set right now, they, whenever the government wants to pass a certain legislation in Parliament, it will be so easy to whip members of Parliament or even senators. It, it has always been very easy for, for the All uh, the time, yeah. All the I, time. I don't think so. It, there are certain scenarios where... The the only, no, the only one is the one for Gen Z that was stopped by the Gen Z, which had already been passed by Parliament. And the uh, president had to go back because uh, I, I, I there was a public I, I think outcry. It's hmm. not about uh, going to bed with the, the government. Mm -hmm. So we are on record, and you know, our pronunciations goes to the answers. It was not just stopped by the agencies. Yeah. Even me, I did not vote for the finance bill. And even if it comes back, I will not vote for it. Sure. So it's, it's not about the Gen We are also the Gen Cs in Parliament, in courts. Mm. So we are not saying that all of us go to bed with the, with, with the executive. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it depends on the numbers that the executive have within Parliament. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. So if they have the majority, we always say that in the Parliament, mm. you can have your... The minority. Minority, the you can have your... But they have their say. Yeah. So if they have their say, it does not mean that all members of parliament are in bed with the government. Mm. But my you question know? is, yes. uh, Honorable Orero, like uh, most of these movers, the motions that we are seeing in the parliament today, they are all geared from the executive. Uh, forgive me to say that, because one, we have a lot of critical issues that is bothering this country, mm. but someone like you, uh, uh, I don't know what would you be your take when you hear people complain about Shah, when you hear people complain about Adani, when you hear people complain about, uh, you know, uh, the Kenna Trako. You know, those kind of uh, issues that are bothering Kenyans, you members of parliament, you're not taking it serious. And this is really, really jeopardizing the, this country. And it is very important uh, to, to even this time to help us understand. When we hear of money exchanging hands in the parliament, is this true or not? Because we need to understand also, so that now we do not send a puppet in parliament 
to represent people, but they are not going there to represent the interests of the Kenyans. Mm. So you as a member of parliament, what, what would be your view on whatever is disturbing the Kenyan people? Just a question that mm, I, just I a want. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Kindly. Uh, uh, of course, uh, I will not be sub uh, it must not be subjective and <laughs> we must just be objective yeah. in, in our questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, as the court of opinion of the people of this country is reflected during their voting. Mm -hmm. And we can never say that the members of parliaments are puppets. No. We are outside there to talk about the challenges. Mm. We led demonstrations in this country. I was one of those MPs mm. who went to all those demonstrations in this country. And we were almost killed by the government. Mm. So you can never say that we are puppets of the government. Me, I'm an opposition MP from Kibra. Right. You so, as a person, probably you could be different, but could you kindly talk on the conduct of the members of parliament, the majority of them, uh, what business do I you would, guys As a member of parliament, mm. I would be very mean to discuss the <laughs> conduct, to discuss the friends. conduct or not, of <laughs> other members of parliament <laughs> who are representing their <laughs> areas and they carry the opinion of their areas. You might find mm. that when they go back there, what they come back with the parliament is a representation of the people's opinion in their constituency. Mm. Me, as I step out here, I will go to Kibra. What I will talk in Parliament That's is what, you are what my people yeah. are saying in Kibra. And you know, like me, I represent a constituency which is highly political mm. in right. this country. Right. And uh, which, by the way, is known for being the opposition bed yeah. within this country. Just and when bed, you don't... Just, just say bedroom. This is the bedroom, <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> politics. Yes. And the, what is disturbing the Kenyans, uh, surely, from informal settlement, mm. disturbs them more than any other place. Yeah. So, even in these cases of Shah, we would be very interested to see when it came to parliament, mm. the opposition... We opposed it in the parliament, but because we were minority, mm -hmm. we, we could not carry the day. If you reflect back when yes. it came, when the, the bill came, you know it was to change from NHIF to, to share. So as members of parliament, we had put our, our I, I remember one member of the health committee, mm -hmm. Dr. Nikal, put a spirited argument about it and the advantages and disadvantages of this. Yeah. But because we were the minority side, it passed. So it does not mean that all the members of parliament uh, are in bed with the system. But when the ruling party has a majority in the parliament, they will want to, you know, their desires to bring changes depending on their manifesto mm. and the strategic plan yeah. of, the, of their political party. Mm -hmm. So the, if they want to fulfill the promises they made to Kenyans, yes. if that is the way they want to do it, mm. us will not be part of it because that is what they sold to Kenyans. Mm. So we would want Kenyans what to see mm. what they bought from the, the ruling party. Yeah. yeah. If they laid the bed, if they spread, let them lie on they it. Lie on it. Allow me to ask you this, gentlemen. What do you think Again, starting with you, Wakili, the jurisprudence that is being set in, um, in this particular case is quite new to us. Uh, when you see the deputy president being impeached and then he's heading to the court, we're seeing legal minds fighting and, you know, at the end of the day, they're friends. Yes. Uh, there's no enmity there in that profession again. But what is being sent out there? And even as you as legal minds, including Wanjiko, what is the country learning through this process? Okay, uh, on impeachment, yeah. uh, in as far as uh, the High Court and the courts and the judiciary is concerned, mm. uh, the real issues have not started being discussed, so we cannot say uh, already there is a uh, jurisprudence being set. What we can say that the jurisprudence is being set is on the parliament. Mm -hmm. The parliament have already made their mind. They have already done away with the real issues. Mm -hmm. What is happening in the courts is still um, minor applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the real when the real issues start being uh, discussed on the impeachment on the impeachment process, we're going to see uh, the production of evidence. Uh, how was the evidence 
produced in Parliament? How was the evidence produced in Senate? How was the voting? Uh, why did Parliament uh, do an all-round vote while Senate did um, uh, voting on each on each count uh, of allegations that uh, against the uh, uh, the impeached deputy president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are what we're going to see. Now that is when we're going to see real jurisprudence being set. We're going to see uh, moving forward. When we now come to later in 2027, we want to impeach a deputy president. Is this the route we're going to follow? Uh, the, the, what is going to be very tough is that in the courts, mm -hmm. the, level of, uh, the level of evidence accepted is quite high compared to parliament. Yeah. For parliament, uh, uh, they might take what is uh, uh, something that they, ca they can take something. However, for courts, it mm -hmm. must be it must be accurate. It must be verifiable. It must be seen. It must be uh, properly proved. Now, uh, what is going to happen is that there is going to be a test whether parliament should now uh, just take mere allegations and impeach someone mm. yeah but i think that should be how should it be done uh, allow me to ask you this it, in one second the standing orders parliament national assembly and the senate operate differently of course yeah, so which means the senate had to question each and every count independently that depends on uh, uh, how it is brought within that house okay how the speaker determines the procedures within that house and the application of their standing orders mm. in that house. Okay. So ours was determined the way one vote for all the eleven charges. Ah, I see. And then they are they had to go each mm. of them. Okay. When it comes to jurisprudence again, uh, Patrick Wanjiku is out there, mm -hmm. and I'll come to you, Mushimia, because you go out <coughs> there and you talk to your people. Public participation was conducted across the country. What do you think is in the mind of Wanjiku as we speak? Because now we have. Um, he said we had a, a judicial quagmire mm -hmm. and a political quagmire. Now let's talk about that. Right. In the minds of Wanjiku, as we speak, Wanjiku is lost. Right. The, the reason as to why Wanjiku probably feels left out is because, one, uh, when we say public part participation in this country, we all know that it's just wordings. It's not something that is practical. Mm -mm. So we are all left. What do you mean? Uh, the opinions of public does not count in this country. That's what I want to say. Okay. Uh, other than when it is election time. Mm -hmm. When we elect these members of parliament, senators, governors and all that, that is when it counts. And actually it does not fully count because mm -hmm. also there is a lot of manipulation during the uh, ele election time. So the Wanjiko feels, because what the first time, the first week when this impeachment mover was taken to parliament, mm -hmm. I went out. Actually it was a coincidence whereby me, Gadono Mushomba and other people, we met for a lunch and they decided to go for a political rally, which I joined. And the fact was, the argument was Kufa Makanga, Kufa Nderefa. So they, the, the, the feeling was if Gashago has to be impeached then, the old presidency had to go. That was the stand to, for, for, for Wanjiko. Mm. And you remember, uh, as I, we said, justice or treatment lies on fairness in the hearts of people. It doesn't matter what uh, the deputy impeached Gashagwa did, mm -hmm. but the aspect of fairness affects everybody in this country. Actually, most of us or people might not be supporting the counts or the allegations that were pointed out. Mm -hmm. But the fact of treating a person in a fairly way might count in the heart of the people. So the people, the Wanjikos, as I do not represent any, although um, I'll be contesting for Kenyan president in 2027 to hey, represent okay. this country, yes. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, yes. hold, hold. hold. <laughs> yes, I'll be television. contesting, yes, contesting for Kenyan presidency in 2027. Because I've realized if we do not stand out as people who have credible, integrity, honesty, background, especially in the forces, somebody like me, we might lose this country at the next expense of people who do not care, think, be, uh, think about the people they represent in, the, uh, uh, in their respective areas. Mm. So the Wanjikos are crying out there. And I asked myself one time, there was, um, when, during, during the, uh, during the bill, the, the next mover, that, or the next uh, uh, trending thing was Ruto must go. But none, 
none of the members of parliament, none of the persons would hesitate to go and take that kind of a motion in the parliament. And as per se, uh, the uh, Honorable Borero will tell you that even the in, re reconstitution of IBC is left at a, a, as a gap intentionally because most of the things politically cannot move in the absentia of IBC. So what should have been a priority during and after the, bi the financial bill should have been pushing for IBC to be reconstituted. But what are we seeing today? Nothing. And when we talk of seven years actually also increment on the on the on, on the on the presidency, what it means that also this member of parliament will be the beneficiary mm. at the end of the day because they have to push their timeline to that seven years. Okay. So we are having we are in a very bad quagmire, in a very bad state ex, as a country in matters of rule of the law, in matters of governance, in matters of integrity, in matters of transparency, in matters of consensus. So there is no consensus in this country. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I Just remind you that to, he, I really he, want he, to respond <laughs> to my colleague. He's, 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 he, you might consider him as a yes for education. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I, I fight for my right. I don't uh, be considered. Me, I'm elected. Uh, I, I see. By that. Wanjiku, mm -hmm. not by anybody. I am not appointed. Yes. No, I am elected. <laughs> and I, I want to tell my friend here that uh, we, must, we must not be selective. Mm -hmm. on the opinion of Wanjiku. Yeah, sure. There are certain parts of the country that endorse the impeachment. There are certain parts that were saying Kofa Dereva, Kofa Makanga. Mm -hmm. And there were also certain parts that had no clue of what is happening. Right. So we, we cannot have wholesomely that say that uh, the Wanjikus all were saying that uh, Gachagua should not be impeached or something like that. Mm. So the opinion of the voters depend also from their representative. Where mm -hmm. the representative is coming from, you would realize that if I were to go to my constituency, it might be a different story. Because yeah. I did the public participation in my constituency. Mm -hmm. And I represent their views. Mm. If I walk with him to my constituency, he will realize that what I am saying is in Parliament is what they are telling me to say. So different parts of this country, they have different views on the political status yeah. of this country. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that uh, he is saying that the members of Parliament should have integrity like his. You know, we do not have integrometer <laughs> to measure his integrity. <laughs> The, the integrity of a person, apart from the structures and apparatus of the government, yes. like the EACC, and also his ways of living within the public system, mm. that is a measure. And that threshold is very difficult to find if you, don't, you, are, you are not subjected mm. to those government apparatus. Mm. And I can tell him it is not easy to be in that august house. You must carry the aspiration of the people that you represent. And sometimes it will not matter about your status of mind, mm -hmm. but it matters about the needs and aspirations of your, your constituents. Right. And within that parliament, there, there are many, many people who are, have that high integrity you are talking about. And you will find them come back in the next election because their people think that they have represented them well. There are many bills that come into that parliament. Mm. Even the impeach impeachment of the president, if it comes, we will look at it and the merits and the merits of mm -hmm. that impeachment. Mm. But sometimes it takes the guts of a parliamentarian to bring an impeachment of the head of state. Especially, you know, we have systems of government. This is a presidential system of government. It yeah. is not a parliamentary system of government. Mm. So sometimes in a presidential system of government, the kind of democracy that is exercised is quite different from a parliamentary system of, of government. Mm. So members of parliament sometimes might be very reluctant to bring a bill that they know from the onset that is a cropper will not even see the light of the day. Mm. If you don't have numbers, like now maybe a political party, you don't have the numbers, sometimes you must look at the numbers within the parliament. This motion, is it for public gallery? Mm -hmm. Is it 
I, the, the deputy president said that the parliament is a theater of the absurd. Yeah. You know, we cannot make a parliament to be a theater of the absurd by bringing a motion that does not meet the threshold mm. of the parliamentary uh, system. So even as a member of parliament, you cannot just go out there try to impeach the president knowing very well that that motion will not pass yeah, yeah. so, so that, you must do the background check mm -hmm. find whether you have your facts right you have the opinion of members of parliament who represents you see the sovereignty of this country is now is about the opinion of members yes and it is represented by members of parliament so we carry the opinion of our regions. He almost pushed me off my feet. What do you want to say? Uh, allow me to also uh, chip in in this uh, Wanjiku issue. Who <laughs> really knows what Wanjiku is saying? Mm. As for me, I can only speak of my two friends, uh, Owanda and Obinchu, who told me, whom we discussed and agreed that Kufa Dereva Kufa Makanga. Mm. Uh, as, what I, as of what I saw in the public participations, what came online, what came on the TVs, I think the MPs did not uh, take into regard uh, what the Wanjiku said. Uh, in as much as there, is, there are uh, places, probably his place, mm. where, uh, where he represents, uh, they said Kufa Makanga only, uh, I know of many regions where their the, the MPs disregarded what the people had said. Look at Nandi. Uh, I, I, I come from Nandi. Mm -hmm. and I, they, from Cheregai? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and many people there were saying, no, Kufa Dereva, Kufa Makanga, how, how does it help us to impeach the, pre the deputy president? Does it, uh, does it bring food on our tables? Does it discuss uh, proper issues uh, in government? There is this, uh, there is this bill I, I recently saw. Mm. I saw it online, then went to check it, and I was surprised that it's true. They want to privatize uh, uh, water. They want to privatize water. Have you seen the bill? It has not come 20, to the floor of the house. 2023, uh, uh, <laughs> I think it's something 2023. It's a bill for 2023. They want to privatize water. What is now, uh, it, it's just the same as what is happening uh, with, the, uh, with the JKI. Mm. What is happening with uh, Ketraco? They want to privatize the most important human resource, water. So it's going to be very hard to defend okay. uh, our members of parliament. You know, <laughs> one thing that uh, the privatization, mm -hmm. yes. one, the act, it was moved that now it can be done through the treasury yes. without passing through parliament. Okay. So even some of these agencies, state corporations, mm. yes. like now, when they privatize, it does not need to come to parliament. Okay. So the act had been changed. And because of the numbers mm. that were there in parliament, it was just changed. So like now parliament, we really have no thought. We can only oversight yes. uh, uh, those mm. private uh, entities, but we will not have the authority to, to refuse the executive to privatize. But maybe the opinion of the people, the people can refuse. And they have a yeah. way of refusing. Sure. Mm. So I think that is where we are now, For even sure. if they want it to privatize. Count, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm told we, we've been added one more minute. Yes. But then I want us to split this. Mm -hmm. um, you said you are running for president in 2027. Allow me in time to interrogate that further. Right. Um, Which political we, party? Re really, what happens? I, 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 ju I just want to comment one thing because uh, you know, j just because of time. Yes, you running for presidency in 2027. In 2027, and okay. uh, so the the reason political party. A political party. The reason why I don't want to talk about political party because okay. that is what m manipulating most of the members of parliament in, in today. I want people to look at the leaders, but not from have the a point. party. Much yeah. as you want to speak, yes, you have a party. I have a party. Okay. So as much as I want Kenyans to look at people from the perspective of the point of what they stand for mm -hmm. before they look on the political party, mm -hmm. because most of these people you've heard the member of parliament say it here mm -hmm. that. If you do not have the numbers, okay. what, why are you talking about the numbers in Parliament? We should be talking universal people being in Parliament who can independently make decisions mm. without the fear of the intimidation from their political parties. Mm. So uh, we want to see universal political parties that will take people to Parliament 
and the decision they make will be very independent. Uh, universal, give an example, Kenyan uh, example. Universal. We do not have such in the uh, in, in, in Kenya today. I, I want to okay. tell you, you know me, I'm a practicing politician. <laughs> okay. We can never have universal political parties <laughs> because political parties are a form to acquire power, and mm -hmm. they have within the presence of of their uh, manifestos. Yes. The they constitute the minds and the aspirations of people uh -huh. to acquire uh, power politically. When you go to mature democracies, even like in the UK, US, even in the US, yes. within their democratic party, you must operate within that political party. And you must be whipped to operate within that party. Yeah. So whipping of party members, you must mm -hmm. conform to political party lines. And you must yes. have numbers. And you yeah. must have numbers. So you but see now, th the this democracy fails then. You, you understand? Well, that, that, is, that is true, right? right? Democracy, democracy is for the know, people, by the people, and to the... So how, how does it political fail party, within a political party? Political parties, mm. let me now talk as a politician. Political parties mm. do not define democracy, if I'm, I was asked. So democracy means you can independently make decisions mm. without the questioning of your political party. So that now we do not have people who are fierce. Mm. He, he will tell you the truth. He cannot move anything that is not agreeable with his political party, mm -hmm. which we don't want to see those things mm -hmm. come 2027 and other years. Let us have a country that is governed by the by the by the by the uh, rule of the law, gov governed okay. by the whatever, so I that now we are I able wish to. I had more time because yes. this is now interesting. <laughs> <laughs> when you get into political parties, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Honorable Borero will not take you. You know those hypothetical <laughs> idealism. I don't really want to congratulate <laughs> Sang. I want to congratulate <laughs> Sang. I want to congratulate <laughs> Sang because I uh, Sang uh, from one, how you spoke, mm -hmm. I am seeing a very, you know, upright person and a person. Who does who is who is impartial in what he is saying? Mm. And again, what can prove that he is a lawyer is because he went to school of law. What can prove that particular so he is an integrated man is because of the military. So we do not measure How is the, the military measured with integrity. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> you know, you know, your integrity. You know, there's uh, still a line between loyalty <coughs> and integrity. integrity. Uh, Those are the two uh, different. I want you to check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go check. I want you to go and check most uh, what what military believe They're in also talk and about the, the core teacher. values and the core <laughs> values that the military believe in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I, so w what do you make of this seven-year term? Um, do you support it? I really don't support it because Thank you. yeah, we, Thank I don't. You. Bushima, what about you? The extension. Uh, this uh, uh, Yakub uh, MP of um, Fafi came with it in 2022. Yeah. Senator Chirarge came with it last year in September. Again this year, October again, Chirarge floated. What do you make of that? Is insanity. Insanity. <laughs> in okay, that, that's, a, that's a precise answer. What do you make of that, Wakili? Because, of uh, course, there must be so many constitutional provisions that must be for picked me, and activated. For me, yeah. uh, I tend to agree with Gerard Gay, but not today. <laughs> not with the what current, not the, with the current crop the of politicians. Mm -hmm. Not with the current, uh, not with the root as the, the, as the president. Mm -hmm. Not with the... Uh, uh, Gerard Gay as the senator for Nandi. These people, uh, the crop of politicians we have now are very greedy. They mm -hmm. put their self, mm -mm. They, 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 they put, they put their desires. You know he represents a certain constituency. <laughs> I've said some of them, okay. some of them, yes. He's not there. He, he's, he's not there. He seems I don't know. He's, <laughs> he's make it clear that he's not in that group. Uh, I have said I don't uh, support it. If, if, if it is what that is not in that, his no. group, his actions will prove the same. Okay. Yes. I see. <laughs> we, will, we will, when it comes to parliament, you know the, the Senate cannot make the laws. It yes. will have to come to parliament sure. for us to discuss it. Yeah. Right. Yes. It will not but, but, but for now, even as a party, so our secretary. Let me finish. General, so it is not possible. No. Yeah. Let, let me finish what I was saying. Uh, the, 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 this, it, it would have been uh, correct, but now it's not a priority. We have a lot of priorities as a country. Yeah. We have a lot of things to do. I, imagine if it would have it would have come with a, a constitutional amendment which said that uh, we want to uh, probably maybe uh, reduce the number of MPs, maybe uh, such, such that each county has two MPs, mm -hmm. a male and a female, and take away and put away, throw away all the women rep, so that we have a male and a female uh, MP representing each county. Uh, we have uh, a male and a female senator representing each county. We'll be 
cutting the wage bill, be cutting uh, uh, most of the nonsense we see in the, in the parliament. Mm. Yes. I think he's quoting from over the, uh, this, this one of the senators all, uh, already bringing such a motion. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, a proper uh, motion uh, to reduce the uh, numbers. Such a but bill yeah, to, to, to support. But let me say, mm -hmm. we let, can never oh, say... Let, let, let me finish one, one last thing. The thing with my senator... <laughs> Director is gracious again enough, okay. one minute, because okay. she <laughs> says it's sweet. The, the, the thing with my senator, <laughs> yeah. uh, Cherar Gay, is that when you want him to be right, he's wrong. When you want him to be wrong, he's right. So I think it's up to you. Let me be very clear. <laughs> if this country is run through governance and yes. policies, uh -huh. I want to assure you, it, we will not be talking about time limit. We will not be talking Kikuyu's, Luya's, Kalejin being in power. Because it will be none of the Kenyan business. Because mm. the rule of the law, governance, policies are working. Mm -hmm. So whatever is not working in this country, and that is why people are in strife of uh, uh, tribal politics, is because there is no governance and policies guiding this country. Yeah. So let's not talk about t a term limit. For what reason? We don't need it. We actually have to have a country run when it, a country is run well, with, uh, with go good governance and policies, we will actually not talk about any limit. People can, not, can decide to let the president be there or let the president not be there for whatever term, depending on the comfortability of the mm. Kenyan and the comfortability okay. of the people. Which, but to fi finalize for us, the, the issue of term limit, it's brought a uh, lot of issues and some people are saying this, that a di diversionary tactic, sort of priority, uh, or something? You, you have said it. I, I think when it comes to the floor of the House, yeah. like in, uh, our, in Parliament, National Assembly, mm. I think it will be dismissed. As a political party, I think our secretary pronounced himself on the stand mm. of the ODM political party that we don't need so, uh, such those amendments. Mm. But before I leave, you know, I must say hi yes. to Kibra member. Uh, <laughs> member, <laughs> member of, Kibra member of parliament is yes. just 200 meters away. Go, go ahead. From here, go ahead. I must thank them for giving me the opportunity to represent them in the National Assembly mm. and always I will carry their aspirations as a constituency. Yeah. When yeah. we give you the right. universal party, you will be a good person. Mm. But now he's still bowed. <laughs> he's a, he's a good person. He's, he's a good person. person. <laughs> we must admit I, that. I must say that every man must have a dream. Right. And your dream is valid. Right. So we cannot dismiss you. You have a dream. <laughs> yeah. Every achiever had a dream, including all of us here. Right. We had a dream. So if you're yeah. going for that particular seat, yeah. who are we to say I that you don't have to go for it? appreciate so much. Or you, you go for it. If you can't make it, it's a, it's a battle for everyone to fight I it. I appreciate so thank much. Thank you so much. And Wakili, thank you so much for doing a good job as well. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for joining us. Well, Asante Sana for joining us on the show. All right. So let's take it at that point. Wrap it up. My name is Victor Law. Um, uh, Mishmeo Orero, representing the great people of Kibra constituency and also how Patrick so a governance expert, he said something that uh, we'll have to interrogate it further. Wakili Asante Sana. All right, let's take a break. GMK continues shortly after this. Good morning. <laughs>